Now, the beautiful thing about factorials is they always end in an exclamation point. Uh, back in the day when I taught, uh, anytime we dealt with factorials, I would just scream the number. Because a factorial, let's just say four factorial. That's what the exclamation point means. So when I was teaching, I would just say four because, you know, exclamation point usually means you're excited or, you know, there's an expression. Um, but what this means, four factorial, means we start with that number and we multiply each consecutive digit all the way down to one. So four factorial is the same as four times three times two times one, which we know is the same as 24. So four factorial is the same as 24. So if I said seven factorial, that's the same as seven times six times five times four times three times two times one, which is 5,040. So seven factorial equals 5,040. Now, depending on the type of calculator you have, you might actually have an exclamation point button for factorials. So I have a TI-30X, it's a Texas instrument, um, and I have a PRB button. So it's PRB, it means probability. Um, so if you have a probability type button, that's where you will see permutations and combinations. You will probably find a button with an exclamation point. That's what this means. So you would type in four and then go to the PRB button over to the exclamation point and it'll spit out 24. I always recommend when you're using a calculator to try one when you know what the answer is. So you know the answer to four factorial is 24. So type that into your calculator, make sure you know how to use the buttons. Now let's use an actual application of this. There are six horses in a race. How many different ways can they finish? Now, this problem can be done by taking six factorial, but I want to show you why. Because if you can understand when and why these types of problems exist, then it's going to make it a little easier for you to know for next time. So think about this. We have six horses in a race. When they're lined up and you're thinking about, oh, I wonder who's going to finish first. How many options do you have? Well, you have six options of horses that can finish first because there are six that are lined up to race. Now, as they're running around the track, we know that one horse is going to cross that finish line first. Okay, great. So the horse crosses. How many horses are left to finish second? Well, five because one of them has crossed the finish line. Great. Then the next horse crosses. So the second, we got second place. Now there are four left for third place, three left for fourth place, two left for fifth place, and then that poor last horse comes in last. So this is why we would say six factorial, because this particular example is when everything or every horse in this race matters and the order matters. So we have six options for the first, five, then four, then three, then two, then one. So we would multiply that together and there are 720 different ways for these horses to finish first through sixth place. So when you're thinking about putting things in order of like how many options for the first, how many options for the second, and you're going through all of them, that is where the factorial option comes into play. So that's factorials when and how to use them.